I've been very curious because there was not a lot of news on this for a while. I felt like, and now we suddenly got some news and it suddenly has dropped. And that was Heron Preston's collection with H&M. So Heron Preston was hired by H&M to be, if I'm not mistaken, was it a menswear advisor initially? Was that the initial role? I think that's what the initial role was. Let's see if it, Heron Preston, Heron Preston, uh, H&M hire. I'm not sure what his actual legit role was. Let me see what's before I continue with this because I think that's important to kind of summarize here. Yeah, so Heron Preston will act as consultant for H&M menswear line and mentor new talent. The designer who 2010 co-founded streetwear brand Bintrill with the late off-white designer Virgil will also design a seasonal capture collection for H&M expected to launch in 2012. So he's basically like a, you know, an advisor for lack of a better term. You'd imagine if he does a good job, they might give him a permanent role because I feel like oddly enough, his aesthetic, his sensibilities, his style, um, his design philosophy kind of matches up a lot to what H&M kind of does. It's almost very much in line with HM. It's actually a really good appointment, I would say. More so than him taking a job at like a high fashion, ha like at a fashion house somewhere. I don't think that would really work too well. I don't really think he has the range. He has the skills. The expert Again, as much as I love the guy, um, he doesn't really have the range, expertise, or maybe the product offerings to really take those type of jobs to the next level. But when it means H&M and when it means to kind of like, you know, um, perfecting like wardrobe staples, um, unisex in terms of like bombers, hoodies, jeans, t-shirts long sleeves caps and shit he's gonna smash it so this is what i've seen online so when you go on h&m main website you've got this h2 um little logo or little um, video that kind of pops up on here um i love the use of the models and all the stuff that they're wearing here it kind of gives you a feel of like some sort of metropolitan street somewhere obviously it's a studio um there is a lot of like you know there is a lot of kind of blending of different pieces worn on men and women and there's no clear delineation between it being for men or women so it clearly is a brand or a collection that's been steered more towards the direction of it being unisex loads of big baggy boxy fits that are very similar to what you'd expect from heron preston on his main line um there isn't a lot of stuff that you would see on his main line apart from maybe a shirt like this i don't really see a lot of that bright orange color that he's usually kind of known for in his main line also but you get the feeling a lot of it's going to be staples like bomber jackets big pants um a lot of nice shirts and shit that a lot of people are going to be clearly into so if we actually take a close look at the collection i actually think i'm not going to lie i legitimately think this might be one of the best things he's done in a fucking long time and the really good thing about this is that i've always thought heron preston clothing overall pricing wise is a little bit overpriced for what it is given where it sits on the fucking shop floor especially in big you know stores and shit and online retailers considering the other luxury brands that you could buy in a similar price range i've always thought the price range of actual you know mainline hair and pressing has always been a little bit too much for me personally but I'm also understanding there's not many brands out there that do what Heron Preston does. His aesthetic, although it can be a little bit repetitive, is very much him. It's very much clear what he does. You can spot it from a mile away. And the people that rock it fucking love that shit. But I do love the fact that he's been able to synthesize all that shit into the H&M collection. Um, one of the things that I love that stands out the most is this reversible bomber jacket. It comes in black. Um, and the reversible comes in this nice burgundy color and also the classic sort of like ma1 bomber um, orange if i was going to choose a color to pick i would maybe at a stretch pick the orange just because it's a classic one but i think the maroon blood orange or the burgundy color might be the one to actually pick because when you flip that around um you know you'd imagine there's not many people that go out there and purposely because the good thing about reversible jackets is that you got the option of it being reversible and you should probably pick a color that you probably would never buy if it was just like a jacket that wasn't reversible. And I think most people, if they were buying a bomber, they'd probably buy a black one. They wouldn't buy a maroon, burgundy, red wine type of color. So I really do like these. Um, I like the fucking badges on it. I love the cut. I love the fact that it kind of seems like, maybe it's a styling of how it's been photographed, but it looks like it's been cut like a circle. So the cut on this is really good. It kind of looks like a circle and it kind of looks like it's going to cut and it kind of crops up really short. I love the fact that it doesn't bunch up at the bottom because I've got a couple of bombers that are cut short, but unfortunately they bunch up really hard here towards the bottom and it creates this unnecessary kind of penis thing in the front, which I fucking hate. Um, if I had to swap it, I would say if I could get the maroon jacket to also have these kind of go faster flames on the side of the sleeves, I'd love that. 
but obviously that go faster flame thing and i think that logo on the back only exists on the one with the orange if you want the maroon one you're not going to get the go faster stripes you're just going to get this kind of tonal design type of thing going on there um this canvas jacket with h2 industries ink on the back i'm not really too fan of it it looks a little bit too much like prison break type shit that's not really for me the denim jacket cut is a bit too baggy for me i probably wouldn't wear that um i like the sweatpants i like this boxy shirt i probably wear the fuck out of that boxy shirt that was very versatile and easy to wear and at 37.99 that's fucking a, a no-brainer. The the bomber jacket, even at two thirty, I think is a good is a good price. Because in my opinion, I'm not too sure if you guys agree, but I think when it comes to high street stuff, H and M quality is really good. H and M quality is like odd. It's like surprisingly good. It's similar to like Urban Outfitters. Urban Outfitters mainline or Urban Outfitters in store stuff. I think I'm actually wearing one Urban Outfitters shirt actually now at the moment. It's almost like a half, you know, long sleeve shirty thing, whatever. The quality is actually pretty decent. It washes very well. It fits very well. There's always big boxy cuts. Obviously, these new, I call them like Gen Z cuts, right? Everyone's got these big boxy oversized type of cuts things. They actually look pretty decent. So I'm actually not that bothered about spending 230 on a bomber jacket page. Because I think it'll actually work or last quite long. You've got these sweatpants. These nice boxy sweatpants that you're seeing a lot of people wear now. Um, the entire Yeezy collection has been based off of this sweatpant, which is kind of, I think, a it's kind of like um, a copy or the precursor to this will probably be the Rick Owens Berlin pant. If you know, you know about that pant right from back in the day, the Rick Owens Berlin pant. That sweatpant has been a legendary one. And there's also a really big, there's also a bigger version. I'm not too sure what that one is actually called. I actually had one of those ones. It's really massive. It's a sweatpant. It's because the Berlin one's a little bit more of a, I guess, a straight cut fit. And then there's another one that's really fucking baggy and exaggerated. But that sweatpant look um, with the non-elasticated hem at the bottom, I love. Nice and straight, nice and flat. Uh, that's pretty decent. The sweatshorts are also good. Reversible hoodie, I don't really give a fuck about. The t-shirt, I love. Both of the t-shirts, you know, you've got this nice over-dyed, um, uh, you know, um, effect here on the top. Nice print there on the back very y2k style maybe again th maybe this stuff isn't going to have the best shelf shelf life aesthetically it's very much in this current era generation but i do like it regardless of what it is i really really like this top this is one of my favorite tops here this printed jersey top where you've got this long sleeve t-shirt boxy feel that's also got this printed mesh um what would you call it basketball top thing that has h2 sport on the front i fucking love that i'm not gonna lie i really do love this top it kind of reminds me of this old um a new york thing t-shirt i had i had all three of them whereas a new york team a new york thing t-shirt back when aaron bondaroff was still the founder of it or still involved in it um the former sort of like um model for supreme and manager and shit and all that stuff before he got cancelled unfortunately he made his really cool shirts that i used to have where it was like a netting so it kind of like it was a basket it was like a string vest that was printed on a t-shirt so i had it in black had it in white had it in yellow i fucking love that shirt i wore it into the fucking ground um it's probably you know somewhere underneath some ocean somewhere um i also love this um layered t-shirt this is also really cool similar to what i'm currently wearing at the moment but you've got this really nice kind of dragon motif here on the side i'm not really too fond of the logo in the middle here the unity thing that feels a little bit gay but whatever um i also love this mesh t-shirt here that says unity this i think that unity phrase works a lot better on here this top actually reminds me of the og heron preston nascar top that he did back in the day with all the logos on it i think this looks pretty cool it almost looks a little bit motocross a little bit nascar -y. i love it regardless um the jeans double double knee jeans worker jeans i'm over i don't care the logo jeans I, could, I don't really fuck with the pink shorts i love the white jeans i love um i also love these i know some of you won't like these but i fucking love this um bike chain bracelet and necklace so it's a bike chain as you would assume um with a carabrina harness or lock but then it's covered in this like translucent um sky blue kind of rubber plastic casing i guess to make sure it doesn't rub or scratch against your fucking neck but it also provides a, another kind of color another kind of design on the top of it another kind of casing i actually really like it um the bracelet is whatever i'll probably say the necklace it's more of like a i guess a choker design and i guess if you wanted to you could probably get it um shortened if you want it but i really do like that again maybe most people won't i like it um this bag i also love this canvas weekend bag um maybe 140 is a bit much for it 
but I love the utility of it. It's off white. It's got these nice big straps on it. Maybe it will stain a bit easy, especially with me, but it looks like you could fit quite a bunch of stuff in there and whatnot and get on with your travels. Um, you've got some of the quote unquote women's stuff here, um, some bodysuits, uh, some corsets, which I don't really give a shit about. The bikini top shit looks pretty cool. But the rest of it, the main collection, I fucking love. I really do love the main collection. So I'm actually, I'm actually oddly surprised by how good it is. The majority of it, I'll definitely wear. I think the price range is on point, and I think I'm interested to see how this relationship continues and how it kind of evolves because they really did keep. I wouldn't say they kept on the wraps, but it kind of felt like maybe they kind of scrapped this whole thing because it was announced and then we didn't really hear anything in between. Maybe it's my fault because I'm not really on Instagram and I hear press on using Instagram a lot to kind of you know interact with these kind of community and shit. So maybe that's the reason why I didn't really see anything. But I do love the fact that now we're seeing it out we're seeing what he's able to do with them and maybe going forward we might see some more interesting cool things continue and this relationship evolve as the years progress but so far big up heron preston big up this h2 collection i love it i think you think it looks flipping cool and i think it looks flipping flipping cool